for us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart and Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, where the student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. And do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. Introducing Gamtel Corporate Internet for home use. See who everyone at home can be online at the same time and for less than you think. Now daddy can be home early and mommy and dad with the family can all have fun together. You can now complete your work at home with our stable, secure and super fast home broadband fixed wireless internet. Home internet couldn't be faster. Download, stream videos, research, play games, learn online and work from the comfort of your home. You can do with the internet. Join Gumtel Sihu today and enjoy the fastest home wireless broadband internet at an affordable monthly subscription. Gumtel, creating a brighter future in communications. Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Kirfato here uh, in our studios from uh, Tranquil. Today I'm left all by myself by the girls and I don't know how I'm going to handle this show. Of course, when you talk about PDIS, you know you, who you're talking to. And it's a great honor for me to have members of the PDIS. Uh, the Administrat uh, Administratory, Idi Jalo. Uh, welcome to Kirfato. Thank you. 
And of course, uh, we want to welcome our brother, Suleiman Bokarba. Uh, if you are online, you know who he is. Um, for the first time, uh, welcome to Kirfato. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, my own brother, um, Kemeseng uh, Sane. Kemeseng, welcome to Kirfato. Thank you, Fatu. Coming up on Kirfato. The PDO is him into being out of necessity. The Gambia was at the time in 1986 a country struggling for national identity. In communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Uh, gentlemen, um, first and foremost, um, I know, uh, Suleiman, you have been away for some time, right? Is this your first time since the, uh, the, the change of government? No. Oh, this, okay. Uh, how has it been uh, coming back home, coming, uh, coming, from the, coming from the diaspora? Well, there is always, uh, the first impression is always kind of a bit sucking. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, these are different environments, uh, different developments. Uh, this is a developing country and that's the developed world there. So obviously, the institutional failures, the deep dilapidation of infrastructure, is not something nice to see. Uh, but obviously, within a few days, you will adopt to the situation like yeah. any other ordinary Gambian. Yeah. This is where we are born, mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's what it is. And of course, now we're <laughs> welcoming you with the on and off as well, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome <laughs> once again to Kirfatu. So we'll start with Idi. Idi, when we talk about uh, PDIS, uh, was established in 1989, if I'm right. 86. 86. Um, up to now, um, a lot of Gambians believe this is a party that brings like more of a educating Gambians on issues and policies. But people will say, these people are not looking to be elected. They are only here to enlighten people. So tell us about the PDOS since its inception. What are some of the key things the party has been able to do up to where we are today? Thank you, Fatu. Good afternoon to everybody out there listening. Well, the PDOS came into being out of necessity. The Gambia was at the time in 1986 a country struggling for national identity, locally and internationally. We've gone through a lot. In the 70s, we had a few parastatals, but in the early 80s, we saw all the parastatals withering away. We saw the establishment of an ERP, which gave rise to the retrenchment of workers, which gave rise to the liquidation of parastatals. The cooperative union was sold, which was the heart of the farmers' enterprise, the commercial bank, which was supposed to finance local entrepreneurs and other government agencies, also collapsed. We saw uh, GUC collapsing. We saw GPMB, the marketing corporation that used to buy our nuts from our farmers, and add value to them, turn it into oil, and others will be exported. Uh, we saw that also being sold. The Public Works Department also went that way. 
So there was a complete failure of the economic system at that time. And I think that is what prompted Doi to write this book, mm. The State of the Gambian Economy and International Economy. This was in? This was written in 1992. 1992. Uh, in this book, you, once you are able to go through it, you will have a real picture of what the Gambia was then and what we were grappling with. So economically, our earnings were ruined. Uh, the introduction of fees to see a doctor or be attended in hospitals started in those days. The introduction of school children taking chairs and tables to school to learn started in those years. And uh, with the advent of Action Aid, uh, education was a bit expanded. You have these Teshito schools then built by people by just to ensure that their children get education. So we saw at that time a stewardship that was not in tune with the realities on the ground. We are unable to really address the needs and aspirations of the Gambian people. And we went into bilateral and multilateral uh, agreements without critically looking at what we are agreeing on. So these are some of the issues that really undermined the economy of the Gambia and by extension also made us to question whether the Gambia is existing as it should be, as a sovereign nation, or is it a nation that listens to the dictates of others, playing second fiddle to the world? That was one of the major reasons why PDOIs came into being. Mm. And uh, in those days, if you look at it also, uh, there was the need also for a Gambian conscious of the fact that a territory was carved called the Gambia. And that territory called the Gambia had its occupants. And those occupants are the Gambians. And therefore any leadership, any authority that arises therein, should take their authority on behalf and from the people of the Gambia and should use that authority to serve those people from whom they borrowed that authority. Then that makes Gambia no more a state where it is run by monarchical uh, tendencies. It must be a sovereign republic where the people have a voice and where their voice is not only articulated, but it is felt, it is known. They take ownership of whatever is happening in the country and they take part in shaping the destiny of the country that they belong to. So growing up, um, growing up, what I used to hear um, when 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 people go on campaign, uh, especially there was label against the PDIs was uh, when Jawara used to say, "Hanila ni Afrika te fa PDIs, Hanila musota kile tati, idingo te kile tati," and this was something that uh, you know was had never left the party. It was stuck to the party, and that's how everybody, even when you go to some communities, people will say, "Nuno kami mfoto nyalo, but inte karte file." Is that anything that um, affected to the party up to where we are today? Well, can I help you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, people tend to give their own meaning yeah. to what others say. Yeah. But let us look at the reality. Mm -hmm. Doyle came into being in 1986. Mm -hmm. 
and from independence 1965 and republican status 1970 to 1986 there was no gambian in the country who could have said he is detribalized he is a gambian mandinkolti mufloti mushuwalet so there was this divide and rule system and if you have a group of people a party that is trying to inject sanity in the political space obviously he who is relying on keeping the people ignorant will do whatever it takes to make sure people remain in the dark but may we further continue to assess what they did they enlightened people without enlightenment this world would not have moved and but can we say can we say even though they, they try to enlighten people they was never able to remove this this messaging from the minds of the people the, 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 they was not successful in getting people to know that no this is not what doi is for because this is what we grow up to knowing and hearing doi ideal community you know yes, you know and I, up to now we people if like, i have to contribute on that yeah i think it's simple jawara made a deliberate political calculative move yeah. to mislead the people about a system called socialism mm -hmm. because that is what he was trying to draw reference from yeah uh, in a sense he deliberately associated it to what used to exist communism in the cold war mm -hmm. era yeah. but even on, on the communism that was not really was the it? case yeah but to an ordinary gambian farmer yeah who is struggling to understand his basic rights. Uh, if you tell the person, here are a group of young people, if they took, take over, uh, what they are likely to impose is the fact that your wife will not be yours, your cars will not be yours. But in reality, uh, him, the ruling elites, from Jawara to Jame, Doi was fighting a lot of different forces. That's how I've seen it. Okay? The, even at the time, Doi is in opposition, with oppositions and the ruling governments, they was fight was in the middle of uh, between these two forces, because all these forces were deliberately misleading the people about Dai's progressive uh, socialist agenda. And but in reality, it is the only agenda that has been tested and has been proven worldwide from protectionism the modern day complexities of modern economies and liberal policies, the genesis of developed world, of developed economies, is through the socialist approach. There is what they call maybe the, the, the hard left, the center left, or whatever. But the reality is, a developing country at an evolving stage, you need to centrally plan and manage your economy. That does not mean you have to have a total control. A total control will result to what we, they call totalitarianism. Yeah. Doi is not saying that. That is why if you read the Doi Manifesto, there are keywords, democracy and cooperative. Okay? So its socialist model is reference to this. Cooperative here means our natural resources will be cooperatively managed to the benefit and the interest of the citizenry. But, obviously, you have a group of people who really always want to be at the, at the helm. And these resources for them to continue benefit from it at the expense of the masses. And you have this group of young people, or um, I would say the ruling allies, who also have their own groups. We call them the petty bourgeois. So the petty bourgeois are also interested in one thing, and only one thing, enriching themselves at the expenses of the masses. So they emerge as a force, a nationalist force, to make sure that our means of production, distribution, and exchange are properly managed and uh, developed in a way that it will benefit the ordinary Gambian masses. 
So what is the what would be the distinct um, difference between DOI and any other ordinary party okay, that, let me help you that we have in this country? Okay. Yeah, you know, first let us analyze what DOI is about. Yeah. We call it the People's Democratic Organization for mm -hmm. Independence and Socialism. As just what Mr. Bass said. Yeah. We believe in organizing the people to put them on a given trajectory that would make them evolve mm. policies, strategies, and tactics that will give them the comfort of being a citizen of a country. We are not saying we are going to impose mm. or control. That is why the word organization is very key in PDOIs, People's Democratic Organization. They organized, they are organized so that they will realize their independence. That means they will be independent in their thinking. They will, they will be independent in terms of economic well-being. That is why we moved on to say socialism in this sense self-reliance, building a self-reliant economy. And in building a self-reliant economy, you need a cooperative sovereignty. That means a group of people who belong to a nation carving their own destiny to help shoulder the responsibilities and challenges that will confront them. That does not necessarily translate into taking somebody's property. Mm -hmm. Because then you are alienating the very people that subscribe to the democracy that you are talking about. And once you alienate the people, it will boomerang. Mm -hmm. One day or the other, you will be unseated, either ceremoniously or unceremoniously. And any politician who is worth his salt will not get into any arrangement that will make that person or that political party uh, in the in negative books of history. So, in short, why, what they seek to do is to help inject a new consciousness in the Gambian political arena. That is, it is the farmer, the sweeper, the cleaner, the architect, the engineer, the media practitioner. Those components put together makes us become the citizens of a country. And therefore, each and every one of these components has a stake in helping to build that country. And you can only do so by collectively harnessing these forces, combining their efforts, and giving them the leverage to realize their full potential. So, so let's talk about policies of the party. The policies, for example, if tomorrow we have a DOI government, what would be the key areas that um, the party would, would be uh, concentrating on to help Gambians, especially the, the local farmers, uh, you know, to help grow our economy? Because this is, for, for us now, the key thing in, in, in Gambian politics is people talk about personalities. We don't talk about po policies and issues. Exactly. And this is what Gambians want to hear. If we have a good government tomorrow, what is going to be the policies of this government? Well, uh so, as a party, we have met at our central committee level and it has been made clear to everyone that we will we assign responsibilities to people. If we are to discuss policy mm -hmm. matters, we can only mention them in passing, yeah. but the real policy issues must be discussed at the central committee level and then the spokesperson 
of DOI is the one who is assigned the responsibility of articulating such. Such, okay. And that's Halifa Sal. Mm -hmm. So this is why I would not want to delve much into that mm -hmm. because it is a domain that belongs to the whole of DOI. Mm -hmm. We had our Congress, we had our resolutions, and as we are speaking, we are trying to build the, the party, that's the mandate. Uh, the Congress delegates gave to the party. party. And that's now the responsibility of the Central Committee to make sure that they meet the targets of the Congress. Nonetheless, two or three key priority areas I know we must address is one, the economy, mm -hmm. two, education, three, the health sector, four, the agriculture, fifth, empower the media fraternity so that whatever is done anywhere in the Gambia will be known to the person in the smallest hamlet so that people will not be passive on Lucas, they will be active participants in shaping the mindset of the Gambian people. That I know. So, 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 Kemi Singh. Okay. So, so, Kemi Singh. Um, what I wanted to hear also is the what uh, distinct uh, difference would you want to give between DOI and any other party that is operating in the Gambia? What makes DOI different from any other party operating in the Gambia? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for that question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you look at uh, DOI as a political party, uh, DOI party is centered on people-centered development. This is a party don't look, uh, don't just look at the development in terms of the infrastructures in the country. You know, DOI believes that you know, if we said a developed country or if you said a country has moved, you know, it has to reflect in the life of the ordinary citizens, the farmer, the carpenter. You know, his life should at least know that he can have the three basic uh, daily meals uh, at his house. This is what we believe in. That's why we say that our development is people-centered development. We said until the people are able to stand and say they are independent. You know, independent is not just to have flags on there, but you can start and provide your own needs, your basic needs. That is, but you look at the country, but it's percentage-wise. How many people are even living in three daily uh, meal in yeah. a day? You look at the house condition of people, how they are living. You know, the development of this country is centered in one area. That is the KMC. How many people travel from the provinces to come inside of Kirina Passage by jobs? And they are renting, they don't have their own compound. You know, at the end of the day, you work for 30 days. You divide your salary from the house rent, how you feed you, you end up with zero. So you work for 60 years, you know, you cannot even sow out a property that you say, this belongs to me. So we say that development must reflect in the life, of, and this is the difference between us and the other political parties. Their development believe that you have to build infrastructures, roads, and other things. Yes, it's necessary. But it has to reflect in the life of the Gambian people who entrust you with the powers and the authority of this country. And they said there is no other responsibility of any sitting government until you, uh, your first responsibility is to promote the general welfare of the citizen. And if you cannot do that, you are not fit to govern. So, but since 1965 or since we gained independence, you look at the life of the Gambian people. You know, you can so out that we have been living for almost 54 years as a country, as an independent state, but we can't have anything that we can so out. We said everything is dependent. When Jawara was living here, our debt burden was $3 million. And he said we will not be able to pay. Jawara was, Yajame was living, he left us with $49 billion. Baro is now, we are counting 56 to $59 billion. So this debt is just increasing every year. But then what, that's where, you know, members of your team comes in. We have, Nas, uh, you know, no. Halifa Salah and CDI in the National Assembly. The Assembly um, approves most of these, um, the, lo the loans and the grants that the government takes. Well, I think and so. they have a role to play in this. No, yeah. I think uh, yeah. here there are different perspectives to this. Yeah. First, do I as a party mm -hmm. and its policies. Yeah. And I'm glad that you've asked that question. Yeah. It could have been addressed better. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reality is what I expect from a Dayo government, mm -hmm. like Kemi Singh alluded to, yeah. a people-centered approach. And what is that people-centered approach? That is what we needed to interrogate. Mm -hmm. And he made reference to the fact that yeah. the country has been locked off in debt from Jawara, Jame, to now Baru. So, now. so now people must ask the question, why the growing indebtedness? In that, yeah. 
Jawara Jame Baro, what are their policies that is leading us to indebtedness? If you ask me from a macro perspective, and I will tell you it is the IMF liberal led programs, mm -hmm. capitalist approach. And I'm not scared to address it. You know, people are very uncomfortable in talking about economic systems. Mm -hmm. And it is this economic systems that gives birth to modern economics. Call it socialism, call it capitalism. But the reality of the matter is, all the ruling parties or regimes in this country, it has always been the same approach. Yeah. That is what is leading us to indebtedness. And that is the approach that needs to change. So I expect from a Doyle government a shift in economic paradigms. But, but then how do we provide for our needs if we are not able to, because we, as a country, uh, we don't have n n mineral resources. How do we get to what, how do we make those money to be able well, to sustain will, the budget that, we, you know, we... I will object to that. You cannot say, Gambia, we don't have resources. We just have grass. We are mortgaged. No, oh, we well. have the fish. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the, the clay soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are all assets that could be processed to and be to utilized. Us? Yeah, obviously, mm. and be changed into national assets. Yeah. This could help us even to finance our superstructural uh, uh, projects. But again, like you've, you've asked, Sidiya Khalifa, they, they in the assembly, yeah. uh, why, what are they doing about all these things? The administrative law in position here right now is directed and controlled by the executives. Yeah. So they determine the kind of policies, the kind of budget, their investment priority and Halifa and City are not in cabinet. But so so, so, so that brings us to that brings another argument. Uh. That brings another argument. Let me bring that. That brings me to the to 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 to, to the Doi ideology. When 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 the supplementary bill was tabled at the assembly, we all cried that no Gambian nobody wanted that to be to, to be tabled in the first place. First place yes. Halifa in his word said that was in fact unconstitutional mm -hmm. if I reference him properly mm -hmm. but then he abstained from voting mm -hmm. the, the, I think he and Sidia abstained from voting what he said if was they no. had let me complete if mm -hmm. they had voted against it mm -hmm. maybe it would not have been passed so what is the rationale behind here you know it's unconstitutional I'm not gonna vote for it and then but it passes and we still government people still gets to pay for that so this is some of the issues that confuses me personally and some other people there are you see when you're dealing with law mm -hmm. yeah. and in their capacity there they're dealing with law mm -hmm. yeah the national assembly mm -hmm. this is where laws are made mm -hmm. this procedural law and the substantive law and in this case there are procedural errors Khalif pointed out these errors mm -hmm. according to him mm -hmm. Before you consider the merits mm -hmm. and the demerits of a bill, mm -hmm. first you have to look at has it gone through due process. Due process. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's laughable when you get to a stage that, okay, I will vote or not vote, when you actually know that there are procedural lapses. It should not even pass the stage. That's what I'm saying. That's the argument. That's, my argument is now it has passed that stage. And we know this is uh, something that is going to affect all of us. Mm, Do we continue with that? No, that yeah, is my uh, argument, right? Okay. Uh, Fatu. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Fatu. Yeah. I do not think you've heard Suleiman properly. I think I understand uh, what he what, said. Yeah. Go ahead. There is a salient point there. Mm -hmm. There is procedural lapse. Yes. And because of that procedural lapse, if you vote, you are legitimizing mm -hmm. what is already illegitimate. Exactly. That's true. And therefore, if you are there for the people mm -hmm. and to defend the people by all means, yeah. you should not participate in anything that will tend to be seen to be illegitimate mm -hmm. in the first place. I understand that, and I think I understand that yeah. point. I just want to make this point clear. Yeah. For me, the, 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 my position was, you know, we all know Halifa being somebody who will always, yes, you know, that's what we know him for growing up. That's what we know him for. But again, in defending the people, in defending the people, this was something that everyone, Gambians, cried out for that they didn't want to be passed. If Halifa has both voted against it, it was not going to be fine. So it's, it was just going to be right for him to vote against it and defend the Gambian people in their voice. No, okay. That is another argument, yeah, Sane, right? Yeah, yeah, let me come in here. You know, yeah. people fail to understand yeah. uh, actually what transpired in the assembly. And they think that Halifa hadn't been that Usman Silla has voted would have changed 
Yes, uh, the because there were only no, two, three no, votes. No, yeah, people have to understand. You know, they don't understand, and we can play the because there was only one vote. No, you know, <laughs> people have to. You know, it was not actually one vote or two votes. You know, the procedure of the National Assembly was uh, why Halifa didn't participate, and I support them, and everybody must support them. It is very clear in our, our constitution, section six of the constitution, that it is every citizen's responsibility to defend this very constitution. And when a bill is stable, and the National Assembly is the very institution that should safeguard these laws, and it's very clear in Section 5 then, anybody who do anything that is in accordance with this constitution or even alter any, any part in the constitution is tantamount to treason. So which means that if Halifa Salah has accepted to take part in something that is unconstitutional, meaning that he has violated that very session, that means that he has committed that is treasonable. So at that first place, when Halifa point out that the National Assembly members should anchor their voice on Halifa and said, this man has point something, and they all support him, and they said, let them throw out the bill at the first place. It should not be considered. But they did it. And the process they did it, the speaker came and they said, this is an emergency. It's not the speaker who decides something as an emergency. It's the assembly that decides that this matter is an emergency and we must deal it with an emergency by putting it to the National Assembly members and they will go in for yes or no and they will look at the majority who said yes and it will be must an emergency matter. And if there is a tie in the National Assembly, the Speaker has no voting right. People tend to miss, they say that, you know, he was at the chairman. You know, the House of the Assembly and the House of Committee are different. The Speaker has the right, like a committee, she's a committee of a standing order committee of the National Assembly. She has the right to vote when there is a tie. But the committee of the House, Speaker has no voting right. And these things were appointed. But they, so the whole process was fraud. So whoever take part of it, you support something that is, un, uh, that is unconstitutional. And you have... Come, uh, committed uh, something that is traceable and doy since you know us and we point out all these things yeah. so if we, the moment we either said and, and halifa didn't there's three types of you know in the national assembly to take you either abstain from taking part in the vote and your name will be recorded or you either said you you decide to take part in the vote or you decided to just stay neutral that means you didn't take you don't want to take part in what is going on because it has no basis on the law and Halifa attacked the state where there is no basis on the law. And he feel like he should not participate. That has no basis on the law. So he didn't even abstain. Because the moment you abstain, your name must be registered as abstain. And there is no law in the standing order. That says that one has to raise your hands to be counted. That's not the way. So but what people have to understand, when they went, there was a tie in the whole bill. Because the bill was passed and they, almost all the majority people who spoke and speak against the bill, you know, we can say that the major the speaker could have put them question to the national those in favor for this bill yes or no which he didn't did so he know that there's a tie in this he said let's go head by head so the first head was the bill under agriculture because they feel like that the farmers you know they need these fertilizers and seeds and you know the government can only bring these fertilizers you know by you know relying on this supplementary budget so they want these people so they said and people you know they sympathize because of the condition there because if not the farmers they are farmers seeds will not be bought and other things so they went in 17 people vote in favor of that agriculture, the part of the agriculture, and 13 vote no. So automatically that has gone. Was, yeah. this, that means that the majority has supported and for them to approve. They say the Chuban doctor, that is the health. They say the Chuban, the other section that was here, their mandate is finished. So there is no Chuban doctor presently in the country. These guys are going. And they need to bring another batch of Chuban doctors. And by doing that, they want to rely on this very uh, supplementary budget. So they went in for vote. 18 people against 11 voted for this. There was only a tie when it comes to the security. They said they have put some people in the security force who have worked and their salary should be paid. And 17, 17, 12, 12 voted. And there was a tie and the speaker said, then I will vote. And speaker vote in and it becomes, you know, automatically. So we mean that all the heads that were selected automatically combine them together, becomes and form the part of the supplementary budget and it was approved. It was not the tie of the whole bill and people fail to understand this. They think that if Halifa has put in his vote, it was, if Halifa put and the speaker put, still now they will have 13-13. And, so and, and, so, who, and who would break the tie then? So who would break the tie? Nobody. This is the problem. <laughs> and that is only one head. But yeah. the whole three quarter of the budget has been approved, approved during the order. parliamentary stages. Yeah. People have voted, you know, and they have shown the difference. So this is the problem. So and people have to understand. So it's not Halifa didn't want to take part in the whole process because it has no base on the law. And so why will you take in, part in it? In conclusion, mm -hmm. what we must learn as a nation, if we are a serious people, mm -hmm. we must learn to respect 
the laws mm -hmm. of the land. Yeah. And if this is the procedure, let us follow the procedure to the letter. Mm -hmm. Then each and every person will put in his input. That is the way to govern a country and make it all inclusive. Mm -hmm. so, but you cannot say, mm -hmm. this is what you are going to do because you are trapping people to do such and such a thing because this is agriculture. If they, they are not saying no, if they say no, it will go against the farmers and they are, popul uh, they are politicians. They want the support of the, polit uh, the, the, the farmers. If you don't say this, this is health, yeah. it's going to rebound on them. You know, that's not the way to run a country. Mm -hmm. Running a country does not necessarily re require the leadership to play games. What it requires is for you to be sober and for you to come up with policies and programs that will, will reflect the needs and aspirations of the people. And not only that, let it be based on laws. Let it be based so that mm -hmm. no one and at no time mm -hmm. will you ever be questioned. Because one has to guard one's integrity mm -hmm. if you want to last long in not only the political arena, if you want to be a dignified human being. So, so that brings, before we take our first commercial break, they have signaled me, I want to bring um, the, the leadership of, I want to talk about the leadership of the party. So um, Doi um, has been known for the leaders, Halifa especially, has been known for somebody who believes in the rule of law, who believes in democracy. But someone told me, um, since um, its inception, the, the leadership of the DOI has just been rotating between Halifa and Syria. Is these are the only people in the party? Why just Halifa and Syria all these years? Well, it's interesting that you've got Mr. Jallo here. <laughs> As an admin secretary. <laughs> but has, has he ever been, you know, in the leadership? Yeah. I have been elected uh -huh. to be part of the Central Committee. Yeah. Whilst I was not even present in the Congress mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah. So it tells you the democratic nature of the party. Yeah. The Congress took place in 2015 at Bansang. I was in Bakau doing all the things, doing political work. And they went to the Congress and the Congress delegate said, hey, we have to put in ED as part of the executive. executive. They voted and they voted me in. And that's how I got in the executive. So, Doi is not limited to Syria. But, but why do we always have Hadiya, Halifa and Syria as the, the Secretary General to no. this time and next the other one? No. It's always been like that though. Why has it been? No. Are they the only people in would Doi you, executive who you, can serve? Would you allow me to? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, parties mm -hmm. are based on a set of principles mm -hmm. and ideologies. Yeah. And whilst you are expanding, you want to nurture the minds of the young people that are coming into the party. They have the intellectual wherewithal, they have the capacity to even take up leadership today or tomorrow, but what needs to be done is to make sure that whoever is going to be selected or elected to that position will really be ready to be a servant of the people. That is the difference between Doi and other political parties. Let me give you an example. At the time when uh, uh, vehicles were given to National Assembly members, mm -hmm. everyone wants a car. Yeah. Everyone wants to go somewhere and you are looked up to, you are respected. But uh, the DOI refused. And before they rejected these vehicles, mm -hmm. they came to the Central Committee. It was tabled. Yeah. It was discussed. And we agreed that none of them should take a single car without knowing the source of these vehicles. But did they... So, but they took the, the cars from the coalition 2016. No, no, no. You, you, is that different? What is the difference? You, you don't understand that. I am the one who represented Doi yeah. in that meeting mm -hmm. of coalition 2016, 16, yeah. where these cars were given. 
So when we come to coalition matters, we will talk about we that. We will talk about okay, that. Okay, go ahead. That's yeah. a different thing. That's a different thing. But what I am saying, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to tell you the policy here. Yeah. If you have taken someone who has whatever it takes to show or demonstrate that he has the intellectual wherewithal, but probably he may fall for some trappings here and there, and that may end up compromising the people because they intends to derive its authority from the people and return that authority to the people and therefore you should not do anything or found to be doing anything that will undermine that authority and in taking vehicles without scrutinizing if, if, without even wanting to know, know the source how they came mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Uh, what, motor, or what moral authority would you have to stand tomorrow and question, question certain things? Yeah. And if such things are not done, where are we heading to? Then that means the country will continue to sink. So in Doi, we want leadership. We want to change the leadership. Move it forward. It's not changing the leadership. It's giving others the possibility of leading, whilst those within the leadership still will remain as leaders or advisors, because you need institutional memory. Mm -hmm. You need people who will be guiding the process at all times. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you must ask a political party the members of the party, party themselves should start to evaluate one another and see if from amongst the members those whom they think can best represent the interests of the people and not do per se the interests of the people and no matter how long it takes us to be able to serve the people. That's our trajectory, that's our following, that's our root. That's your tragedy, that's your following, that's your root. So we will take our first commercial break. When we come back, we will talk about Doi's assessment of the borough government. But we will also talk about the coalition. Uh, Doi spearheaded the, 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 you know, the setting up of the coalition. But today, it seems like they have opted out of the coalition. So when we come back, we will talk about all of this. Coming up on Care Far Too. When Hussein came out of prison, he stood and said, Baro Munna Baro mm -hmm. we are going to support you. Whoever wants to undermine you, you will not stay here for less than five years. <laughs> Wow. $100,000. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, ignore_time_segment_in_scoring うん。ああ、僕もかじゃ。よいもんのんなでめ、だがいてんブラジル。あんなのまやか。ま、ディスナーシアンシアンキー、キャスクユンダウイティビドックビ。メダルだまにリモン、アモルカリス。タンキーダ
Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Brusubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325 9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Effective January 1st, 2019, the Gambia Revenue Authority, in consultation with the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, have now effectively removed charges on tax identification number TIN. Yes, no more charges on TIN. This means you can now walk into any GRA tax office and obtain a TIN free of charge. Not only that, the new TIN has improved features and appearing this time not on a hard copy but in a simpler A3 size copy. Application for a TIN remains the same and all you need to do is to provide your national ID card, passport copy or a birth certificate to obtain one. Applicants are urged to apply in person or give written authority to representatives or people processing their applications on their behalf and avoid using agents. Rush now to any GRA office to get your thing at absolutely no cost. GRA, collecting revenue for national development. Every young Gambian dream of a university degree. He wants a good paying job after graduation, a pretty wife, and ultimately own a dream home. What if I can't afford my desired dream home? And that is why you need to visit Universal Properties. We specialize in customer satisfaction. We listen to every of our clients' needs when we show the properties to our client. Before you know it, you hear the client saying, I like this house. This is the room that cuts my heart. And most of the time, they cling to the door never to let go. Most clients want to close the deal right there. And that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars. We work at our client's pace. No haggle, no hazard. We're waiting for you at our office in Kairaba Avenue here in the Gambia. Have you run out of cash power? Do you want to transfer funds to your family? Or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank? Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services. Funds transfer, cash power purchase, Forex rates inquiries, mobile airtime top up, mini statement, balance inquiry, TBL app is the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash. At Trust Bank, we bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. 
quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel Yaibarom. Uh, welcome back to part two of uh, this interview. Uh, the first segment was very interesting. We talked about joy, um, the policies, of course, some of the issues, some of the um, beliefs the, the party has, and of course, the uh, leadership as well. Uh, but today, um, you know, when, um, for the past 22 years, Gambians were worried about leadership to bring uh, Jam to take Jami out. Everybody came together. But when we talked about uh, uh, having a coalition, I remember we were in the diaspora, and uh, and the, the the common agenda was to let the parties come together. There were so many times Halifa Sala was on the radio. There were so many times Farmer Rajalo Tambajong was on the radio, and people were like, "No, we just want a coalition." And of course, Doi spearheaded the setting of the coalition, and um, everybody agreed Halifa became the face of the coalition and uh, people were he was very instrumental in giving strength to everybody especially during the the impasse so um Doi became the central figure of the coalition and then the coalition was set but there's been so many argument about this coalition um when 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 the president even um, uh, selected the cabinet from the initial stages, uh, there were like uh, arguments that they were offered um, uh, ministerial positions and they refused. I remember having Halifa on my show and I, I asked that um, question, I put that question to him and I said, um, when you, you are somebody that a lot of us look up to and a lot of people believe you being in that cabinet will change a lot because Halifa is that person who will not um, sacrifice his integrity for anything. And Gambians believed him being there would have made a big change, and he and you did not. And this is an argument that me and so many Gambians believe up to now. Because maybe if Halifa was there, if Halifa was just in cabinet, some of the things that are happening today might not happen. What would be your response to something like that? Yeah, you know, it is good to understand the way governments operate. Yeah. In order to either apportion blame or exonerate someone. Uh, there was the need for a coalition, as you are right. The Gambian people spoke. Each political party went out on tour. And they were told by the Gambian people that we are not going to listen to you unless you go to the drawing board and form a coalition. That was authority. Yeah. That was the beginning of the assertion of the Gambian people. Mm -hmm. They asserted their authority. <clears throat> and all political parties knew they had no other option but to listen to that voice of authority. Because they are the people who are going to elect them. So we said, fine. We started, had our meetings at the Kairaba. First, it was the presidential aspirants. They were brought, discussed. Then the second stage, the Gopher was invited. The GDC was new, was not part of Gopher, but because it was also a registered political the party. party. They were also invited in. I said to Ture, was independent. She was not in Gopher, but because she, has, she had aspirations to become president, she was also invited. So we started to set out the modalities of holding a coalition. And in doing so, of course, we had to look at what will address the situation. And what was that situation? We should have a common position. And that common position is what? That we must 
work hard to make sure Jammu is unseated, that his government crumbles and a new one emerges. But then, if you want a government to crumble and a new one emerges, are you going to ensure that a government crumbles without having a way forward? So that at least people will uh, end up not regretting why they participated or they did what they did. Mm -hmm. So that brought us back to the drawing board to sit down and tactfully think of what must be done to make sure that Gambians from across, across the board will support the coalition agenda. And that is how the agreement came about, and that is how the MOU came about. Oh, wow. And when the agreement and the MOU, when the agreement was drafted, each and every candidate read, understood, and accepted. And signed? And signed the agreement. Everyone signed the agreement? Mm -hmm. Yes, not the MOU, the yeah. agreement. The agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay. 17 October. Okay. And then we said the authority here is the people. Therefore, we do not or we should not try to wield higher authority over the people. What we must do is to allow the people to come and select the person they think can best represent them. That was another segment yeah. of the arrangement. And that is what brought about the convention. Yeah. People don't talk about the, con the convention these days, but it was a very important component mm -hmm. of the whole evolution of the coalition agenda. Each party, irrespective of whether you had a presidential candidate or not, was assigned the task of bringing 10 representatives from each region. Mm -hmm. And that gives you 70 representatives. As a tutorial opted out at the time, uh, Mama Kanda opted out at the time, so we are left with these seven parties. parties. And each brought 70 candidates. Yeah. Uh, 70 representatives. Mm -hmm. These 70 representatives sat down. And each of the leaders who were aspiring for leadership took the podium and spoke. And in conclusion, they all said, whoever is selected amongst us, the rest of us will give support to that person. That was a commitment and a key one. Yeah. Because no one knew who was going to win at the time. time. Yeah. We had our elections. That's history now. Adam Abaro won. So, then we must go to the next stage. What is the next stage? The campaign strategy, the campaign tactic, the modus operandi. And then committees were formed. Where each political party that had a stake had himself or a, himself, herself, or a representative from his party heading one of those committees. committees. You had the campaign committee, the human rights committee, the media committee, the planning and finance committee, many, many, many committees. The education committee. You had all those committees. And all those committees wrote their recommendations. And it was all compiled studied, discussed. The aim of the coalition was one. We said it is to end self-perpetuating rule. <coughs> and in order to end self-perpetuating rule, if anyone wins, 
or becomes the flag bearer. That was in the agreement before. Mm. Even these committees were formed. If anyone wins or becomes the flag bearer, will be there for three years. And in being there for three years, he will not participate in the next following elections. That was designed to make sure that whoever emerges as the flag bearer will not impose himself or use the power of incumbency to retain the presidency. Because the design was to return power back to the people, to where it belongs. That was the spirit. And once that was agreed on, then we agreed on institutional reform, constitutional reform, security reform, and other aspects of governance as well. Once we agreed on this, we drafted the MOU, agreed on the MOU, though not signed. Not signed. Because time was limited. Mm. We came to agree at the very final stages of campaign, and we were working on campaign finance. Time was of the essence. Mm. So the leaders had to go. But before going, they agreed that as soon as they come back, they will sign. They will sign the document. They went. Halifa Salah was in the campaign trail. Sidia was there. OJ was there. Uh, who else? Uh, Adam Bar, obviously, yeah. being the presidential candidate, mm -hmm. was there. These were the key personalities that ran the campaign. And we made sure, before they left, no abusive language was used. We were not in a confrontational mood. We were not taking defensive postures. We were taking ownership of what belongs to us, that is the authority of the land. And in taking ownership of the authority of the land, you don't have to take a defensive posture. All you need to do is to assert uh, your responsibilities yeah. and take over what belongs to you. And that was how Jamir was pushed to the defensive. And we took the center stage. Because the only thing he could have relied on was if he had insulted or attacked and therein he will do one or two things. But we were very civil in the way we operated. We came back and it was announced that we won. Yeah. And oh, everybody was happy. We've made it. Each member of the coalition was happy. All yeah. those who participated, each Gambian was happy. From Carton to Koina was really happy. Not necessarily for the victory only, but for the progress they envisage after the victory. That was their enthusiasm. That was why they voted for us. Mm. That was why they slept in their bantabas waiting for us. It was for them to hand over the baton to us so that we'll serve them, not the other way around. Yeah. But as it is said most of the time, when discussing as a group, you have shared principles, shared positions. But the positions does not necessarily translate into the individual interests. Where the individual interest does not or is not tailored to work within the common position, 
that is where the fractures will start to rear, rear its ugly head. Yeah. So and it started early. Mm -hmm. When did it start? It, it started early. How early? Uh, it, it started, I believe, even before the impasse, per se. Because as soon as this victory was announced, it was celebrated by the people, uh, the German government had a liaison, and Barrow, the president-elect, had a liaison. You can remember that conversation yeah. over the TV, mm -hmm. and they were interacting. And the first thing, the coalition did was to ensure that Gambians remain calm and assured of the victory they had. Yeah, yeah. So we said the first thing to do is to free Hussein Udabo. Because he came from the UDP and of course he was known throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And freeing him will assure Gambians ah, Yesterday, this man was imprisoned by the German government. Today, these people have won, even though they have not taken Take office over. yet. Yeah. But they have been able to free someone who is part of them. Yeah. And uh, that was a good beginning. Yeah. Hussein was freed, he came. Then, two, three days, four days, five days, then the issue of relevance started started to appear. Harifa was the spokesperson. Yeah. And uh, before Jammy changing his decision to annul the elections, I think a few days before that, someone within the coalition mm -hmm. had an interview mm -hmm. with an international media house. Yes and told them that we are going to arrest him, we are going to take him this... This man is in office, his mandate has not ended yet. Yeah. His mandate will only come to an end on the 18th. Still, he is the commander of... Uh -huh. in, of uh, he is the commander-in-chief of the armed the forces, armed forces mm -hmm. and the security forces. Yeah. Uh, if you make such a pronouncement, what will you do? You are, you are sending shock waves at the level of the coalition what that happened yeah. what did you do Ex excuse me yeah. you allow me to okay. give you an analysis of what happened okay so that uh, i want us to deal with this problem properly properly okay so that whoever is listening mm -hmm. will really know what was happening behind the scenes yeah and because of that jamie rene and said he is going to annul the elections, gave a lot of excuses. But the voices of reason arose above his voice. And that was Salif Asala, who was the spokesperson, and said, no, once this is done, and the IEC being the authority to announce election results, that legitimizes Baros presidency. You are legally the president till the 18th. Yeah. But come the 19th, if you refuse, you will be a rebel. rebel. And the whole military apparatus, the whole security apparatus had that loud and clear. And that brought calm. So that was the first on the side of the coalition. They were invited, they were spoken to. The person that did that, I think, apologized and said, I won't do it again, and that's it. Mm. Then off they went to Dakar. And Halifa was here, speaking, telling people, mm -hmm. give work to the soldiers, they are your brothers, yeah. give them lunch. They are not your enemies. They come from your homes. You are their mothers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters. 
they are causing their nephews. So don't alienate them from you and don't alienate yourself from them. And people started giving them mm -hmm. things and they appreciated it. Mm -hmm. So a newborn emerged at that time between the security forces and the population. Fear evaporated. Confidence became established. And in Dakar, as if to make things a bit difficult again, it was announced that someone has gone into the central bank and took away this, that, that, and that yeah. amount. That was my fatty. Yeah. Yeah. Which was uncalled for. At the time, already this blunder has been made. We've rectified it. Now a new, uh, uh, another war one has emerged. At the time, we were trying to make sure the civil service, the security services, the businesses in the country were all secure and safe. Uh, if you send a panic message mm -hmm. to a population that is edgy and no one is there to counter that, what could have happened? They would have broken into the banks. That was another policy lapse. And Halifa countered it. He countered it. He said no. To his best knowledge, there has not been any tampering mm -hmm. as at that time in the central bank. And how can you prove it? So that was another way of trying to show you know something and you are relevant. You know, we must try to understand the way people think and behave at given times. Because then Baro did not appoint anybody. Yeah. No one knew what he or she was going to be. Mm -hmm. So each was trying to make sure that you become the... Everyone was trying to be relevant. The Jaliba of Baro. Oh, okay. There's one Kianka old man who once told me that Idi, Dunia a manke kenten na dunati kunna dunole kunna duno meaning it's not it's not about being an orator speaking or doing or saying many things it's about being able to think and understand the challenges and trying to come up with a remedy to those challenges that is what the <coughs> world is about. And this is what this old man told me back then in Kiang. So in order to continue, yeah. uh, that happened. That did not, uh, it was handled. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. President Barrow came. President Barrow was welcomed. We all saw it. Yeah. We were out till 12, 2 in the morning welcoming him. Over 150 to 160 gele were hired. Those were the people that welcomed him. They escorted him to his house then, in those days, without any economic forces at that time. Yeah. Without even our soldiers taking place. It was the local security, those who sacrificed their life in the heat of the struggle to secure him and the coalition. It was those who went there and sacrificed all the more to live and sleep in the open just to make sure he has a sound sleep. That was done. And then here now Baro is in the country, he is the president, he has appointed a vice president, but there were some issues. There were some issues mm -hmm. and uh, those issues needed to be resolved anyway. Uh, then all of a sudden again, a bill was taken to the National Assembly. At the time when the National Assembly 
was predominantly AP. the assembly of the APRC. Yeah. To lift the age, age, limit. age limit. Why was it done? Was it done in the interest of the people? Or was it done to shoot somebody? someone somewhere? Well, it is for the analysts to analyze that. It is for Gambians to delve into that. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is uh, uh, a way in which if we continue to analyze, it will reveal a lot of things. Yeah. So that happened. And uh, they were told there and then, no, uh, this is not the right time for this. And this is not the way. It's not the procedure. It, was, yeah. it, it should be done. That was also a, pro a procedural issue. Yeah. A lapse. Mm -hmm. OK, then we came back. Now, a cabinet should be formed. You remember where we started? Yeah. It was the people in the Gambia and in the diaspora yeah. that told us to form a coalition. Mm -hmm. It was the people in the Gambia that came as delegates to select a flag bearer. A bearer. Yeah. It was the people who selected Baro as a flag bearer that went back to the provinces and disseminated the information to the general public mm -hmm. and became the campaigners. And they led him to victory. Those same people now are here. You are now president. In the spirit of oneness, of unity, of building a cohesive relationship, there is need for consultation. Because that was how the whole issue of the coalition started. It started as co consul consultation. If it is going to be genuinely followed, it should I mean, follow the same pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we reach that st stage, and that's a crucial stage, because a lot of arguments yeah. are around that thing. Yeah. You know, uh, what, ha what should have happened was there should have been a coalition meeting. Now we have won. Let us come and meet. We meet and then say, ah, this is what and what and what we are supposed to do. How are we going to do it? That did not happen. Instead, there was a document to precede even the appointment of ministers. And that was the asset document. Asset meaning Agency for Sustainable Socio-Economic Development, mm -hmm. in which we would have invited Gambians all over, locally and internationally, wherever you are, if you have something to offer, you become part of that data bank. Give us information, give us ideas, help to direct the way in which the government so. should be uh, run and then move forward. But that also did not see the light of day. The day Halifa submitted that document, it never came out. Mm -hmm. And here we are, this is the document that we should have prepared after which we'll meet, consult, select those whom we think are ready for those positions, and then move forward. That document was gathered, left gathered in dust somewhere. Hmm. And then comes the selection of people to occupy ministerial positions. positions. There was no consultation. Uh, my honorable brother, my fatty, I heard him say there was consultation. But yes, he said that on our show. Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm returning this question to him. Was there any group consultation? Was there any coalition talks on how to govern the country? On who do ministers?
we are to be, how ministers we are to be selected. Because for us, what we thought was this, if the asset is prepared, those who want to be ministers and are in the coalition uh, can vie for it. But in doing so, all the parties that are not necessarily ready to take positions in the cabinet by virtue of the fact that they have different policies and they have a different agenda. And not only do they have a different policies and different agenda, but theirs is for national development, whilst this one is for a transitional period. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Something that is going to be permanently done and something that is going to be temporarily done. Yeah. The coalition government was supposed to be a temporal one. Would, can, I, can I just interject here? Yes. Would it be important to say, um, after everyone abandoning their individual beliefs and ideologies, their party interests, to bring a coalition, at this point, nobody should look at their ideologies or their interests. At this point, it should be focusing on the transitional government. Because when I interviewed, let me come, when I, when I had Halifa on the show, we had this argument. Mm -hmm. He was like, it was not their policy. They didn't want to take ministerial positions. But for us, it was like, at this point, was it important for Doy to say, no, at this point, we especially... You are, if, me, you are missing the whole essence of the discussion. Let me... No, I'm not. Just, okay. just allow me to explain this, please. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Just allow me. Right. You are missing the essence. Why am I saying you are missing the essence? Go ahead, say that. Yeah, why? Uh, once this is established, yeah. you know, there, there were presidential aspirants. Uh -huh. And you will see that play as soon as the analysis continues. Okay. You, you will see it playing. That's the contradiction. That's what gripped the Babaro government. Because once you have presidential aspirations, mm -hmm. you supported someone to win. Mm -hmm. You should genuinely support that person to the tail end. You should not support, pretend to be supporting the person whilst undermining him. So, so let you me... You just allow me to... I, so, but I, I, you know, yeah. it will not be nice yeah. just to okay. allow you to go. Yeah. Yeah. It will be allowed good to also for okay. me to interject. Yeah. Okay. So, go my ahead. point here is, if this is not Barros government, it's supposed to be a coalition government. Mm. If DOI and UDP and GMC and N NRP and all the parties came together, to select to, to, to select Barrow as a flag bearer, and the people supported it. This is a coalition government. That's why he was asked to resign mm -hmm. legally from his party. Mm -hmm. So this is not his government. So for it to be everybody's government, it was it necessary been. to for everybody to participate from the initial stage? If was it not necessary for everyone to participate from the initial stage? No, that is right. Because at this point you were saying, because everybody, remember, every party had amb no. as, um, ambitions. No. Uh, DOI wants to be in government at one point. Uh, NRP wants to be in government. GDC wants to be. So, you but know, you all came if together. You, if you allow me to explain, <laughs> yeah. then you will get the sense of it. Okay, go ahead. If not, you will not get I the just sense. want to be interjecting yeah. too, yeah. before but, I forget. If you interject, yeah. Uh, when ideas are flowing, and <laughs> yeah. but it. then it's gonna make the interview a little, you know. Yeah, so I have yeah. to interject sometimes. Okay, okay, okay. fine. Go ahead. So yeah. now, what I am, what I was saying, yeah, is this asset should have been there, yeah, and then we should have agreed on the modalities of mm. selecting ministers. Okay. And if you are taken from a political party, mm -hmm. you become a minister. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you have faulted. And Barrow sees that he cannot continue to work with you. It is for him to report back to the uh, committee uh, on good government. coalition committee. committee and tell them, ah, Mr. X was here. This and this, he did this, this and that. And really, I cannot work with him. Was this part of the uh, agreement? It was part of the agreement. Okay, great. And then, MOU. if it was part of the, it is part of the MOU. MOU. So, and then, in doing so, after investigations, the coalition partners will tell the person, ah, definitely you cannot fit in. 
But can you get us someone from your party, party. to okay. come and occupy that position? Because uh, uh, yeah. you were a stakeholder, Seriously. a coalition stakeholder from the onset. Yeah. That is why I said in Doi, even if we had not taken the ministerial position per se, we could have said Fatu, go and be the minister of Can I uh, come in uh, here? Information. Quickly? Can I come in here quickly? Mm -hmm. Was it um uh, the MOU, was there any uh, particular part where it says every party should be represented in cabinet, in the MOU? Well, let me read the relevant portion. I think I have the MOU with me. I should because be that is very important. Well. If that is, was part of the MOU and they re refused to be part of the no. cabinet, that would have been the first betrayal no, of, no, the, of, no, the, of the coalition. No, no, no. I'm no. asking, I'm no. asking, I'm no, asking. No. Was it? No, reframe your question. I said, I'm asking this question because if that was part of the MOU mm. and Doi re refuses to be part of cabinet... But was there consultations in the first place? Was Before there... you pass judgment? No, but if... You, you must look at the procedure. Y yeah. No, the MOU what I'm itself. And no. you, you must follow the procedure mm. in the sequence that it unfolds. Yeah, but then, okay. We said we prepare asset first. Mm -hmm. After asset we are going to consult and it is during those consultations mm -hmm. that you are going to select people who are going to be ministers there has never been any group consultations to my knowledge and to the knowledge of doi what happened was factory came of the minister lee suleiman came that is not consultation. That is giving. I am giving you this. And I am consulting with you. These are two different things. At that point, you know, whenever, I'm following the sequence here. At right. whenever um, there were some issues, do Doi and Halifa in his position as the spokesperson was always there to rectify it. When, uh, when, the, when the, four, the chairperson made that remark, the, the, the committee came out and spoke to her and she apologized. When my party made the statement in Dakar, Halifa corrected it. He, so when this happened, when there was no consultation, what did you guys do who, at that point? Excuse me, who were the authorities to call for, co for coalition meetings? Already there is a president. Now, mm -hmm. who is in a position of authority? The head of the who coalition. is the authority now? The Gambian people have mandated him to run their affairs. So at that point, there I was no coalition anymore. At yes, that point, I think, I think uh, overwhelmingly yeah. there was that contradiction of an executive president and a framework designed by the coalition. coalition. Mm -hmm. So it was up to the president to abide by that framework yeah. designed by the president, whether signed or not signed, what is important is its preceding it's text. It's, yeah. uh, it's kind of, if it is something that a, a principle of law is it, mm. acceptable, that makes the MOU itself even acceptable because its preceding text, the yes. agreement has been signed. signed yeah. So uh, Barrow uh, was caught in between that contradiction, whether he needs to uh, go according to terms and conditions and the very principles that brought them together, or uh, should he start exercising his executive, executive powers, powers as a president? Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask me from uh, uh, an academic point of view, uh, really, coalitions on the executive presidency has never been smooth yeah. as far as uh, those contradictory powers and if uh, agreements are concerned, taking reference from Senegal and so many other countries. In the end, uh, it could have worked for the Gambia. Yeah. I mean, if this individual uh, was really interested in pursuing the very agendas, he agreed with his colleagues. I'm not saying it cannot work. It could have worked. But once people get into power and they begin to enjoy those executive powers, especially the executive presidency is very close to monarchical tendencies. Uh, yeah. So you tend to 
uh, forget. But then, you know, Doi is known for, you know, especially Halifa, is known for somebody who believes in the constitution, right? So this president, even though there was a coalition, but it was sworn by the constitution of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that constitution, he has executive powers. Mm -hmm. Let me and in that me. constitution, his mandate is five years. Mm -hmm. In that constitution, he is an executive. He Let has the powers to appoint and fire. Mm -hmm. Fine, that is so good. now, that is where our, the issue is. Um, uh. What does the president um, subscribe to? The coalition MOU or the constitution? You know, you know the issue here mm -hmm. is not the president as a person. Person, yeah. Mm -hmm. The issue goes far beyond mm -hmm. the president as a person. Yeah. It is about building the institutions of a country. Yeah. To have a new start. And in building institutions of a country, a new culture must emerge from an old one. But the new culture that emerges should be superior to the old one. Old one. And in this sense, what we are driving at was collective approach to ensure the collective sovereignty of the Gambia is reflected. And all these parties coming from different backgrounds gives us a reflection of uh, that Gambia. So, but again, I may tell you certain things that may set some light yeah. in your doubts. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, at that time, there were forces that were operating around him mm -hmm. to the extent that he did not see his ultimate advantage. Forces? Forces. Hmm. And these forces can be openly mentioned. Yeah. When Usenu came out of prison, he stood and said, Baro Munna mm -hmm. we are going to support you. Whoever wants to undermine you, you will not stay here for less than five years. Hmm. And whoever wants to undermine you, we are ready to take him to court. That was not a reality. That was playing to the gallery. Because I think, then, I think he wanted Baro. No, that came even earlier. No, 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 what I wanted to do, rectify, rectify it, it, it's not it? about on the mind, it's about whoever wants to forcefully Force, make remove him, him step down. Yeah. yeah. So, what he did at that time mm -hmm. was he wanted, as being pronounced as his father, yeah. he wanted to show that he is close and he is protecting, protecting him. him. Mm -hmm. But then he had his own agenda. Uh, that was, uh, uh, Babaro saw it as a sincere opinion and went along with it. We did. And refused even to consult the coalition in appointing ministers. He would call you and give you a ministerial post. Yes, call another person, do the same. Call another person, do the same. That is when the cracks started to surface. Then we said what could have been done was those who are in the coalition and wants to be relevant still, wants to help in building the country if they are interested, should go to the National Assembly. Assembly. That is the second arm of government. Imagine if there was, if we had all contested under a coalition ticket in the National Assembly, and we are there in the National Assembly to guide the process, a technical team was selected to run the cabinet whilst we have prepared this asset, it is our property, we know it, to the letter, would we be able to hold the executive accountable or wouldn't we be able to hold the executive ac accountable? Imagine a parliament where you have the Usenu Davos, the Maifatis, 
and other intellectuals being in that parliament, having nothing to do other than pass laws and bills that will empower the Gambian people. But imagine a parliament that would all be a coalition um, MPs who would be supporting the president. It's imagine not, that it's, as well. It's not about supporting the president here. It is about supporting... But even, even, even now that we have this kind of all the parties is, in the parliament, no. we still have people who are, you know, they just want to say yes. Because we had a scenario where we said no, pre the president was giving money to parliamentarians. Imagine yeah. when we had a parliament where everyone was a member of the coalition. It doesn't, That's change a different thing. it doesn't change anything to me because it is very clear, you know, the National Assembly, the moment you are a member, your sole responsibility is to promote the interests of the country. And the national interest must guide you and your consent must guide but you. But is, is that, that, it, is that, is yeah, that, that it? Is. And I'm 100% so. Mm. If what it is saying, that was the scenario that was taken, yeah. but we will automatically know that this is a transitional government because mm. there are documents that bind them and these are things that are accepted by his partners. You know, he will know that the, even if I want to do something, these people will tell me, no, this is not what we said. And this is, they will hold him accountable. accountable. So at that time, Baro will know that he's not just an executive president, but he's a coalition president. And he'll be very mindful. And all of those people, their interest will be solely to make sure that this transition will succeed. And the Gambia will have a name that is, because the Gambia was a darling to the whole world. So for us to have a smooth transition, we will win the hearts and minds of so any country in this world. And whatever we demand from the international community, we would have it at the tips of our eyes. But we fail to follow that proper documents and that proper instruments that should have guide this transition. Just look at the contents of the MOU. Who is in this country who will tell you that this is not a perfect document to guide a transitional government? But why people fail to adhere, adhere to it? Because it was not empowering an individual, but it said power for 54 years since we gained independence. Power has ever belongs to the executive. We said now power backs to the people to decide the welfare of their country, how it will be governed. But people in the coalition want to be seen as kings and queens. And by adhering to this MOU, shows that you know, the power is back to the city, so the president is just there has maybe the past yeah, ceremonial, but people will decide how the contest will be run. Uh, he was supposed uh, to no, basically me, supervise. 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 Yes, yes. It's not ceremonial per but se. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we supervise. have made the president mm -hmm. to lose an opportunity. Yeah. And uh, really, that is my sincere opinion, that he has missed a golden opportunity. Mm -hmm. If he had adhered, mm -hmm. if not for bad advice. Mm -hmm. If he had adhered to the MOU, at the end of the three years, he would have registered a lot of successes. Mm -hmm. He would have won the Mo Ibrahim Award. He would have been an international consultant, mm -hmm. going to universities, lecturing, being hired by the UN to do a lot of things. He would have lived a dignified life without the risking being seen in a different light. But we still have, December no, no, I'm just, is I'm, he might resign, you no, never know. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying this, I'm, you know, you, that's a matter of speculation, that's a matter of opinion, he might, he might not. Yeah. That does not Until matter. then we don't know. That does not matter much to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether he stays for five years, that's what the constitution says, if he stays for three years, he is, he is also not going against the Constitution. What is the PDI's position on this? The PDI's position on this is simple. He stays for three years. He stays for five years. He has signed a contract with the Gambian people. Mm -hmm, not PDI's. We went around the country with him. And he told every Gambian that he will be there for three years. So if he decides otherwise, it is for him and the, and the Gambian people, who are the supreme authority of the country, to decide that. What we did was to facilitate his presidency, and he's got it. 
So now um, um, everybody thought the coalition was dead until uh, just a couple of weeks ago when the chairperson came up with um, talks to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to revive the coalition again. Yes. But PDOR has um, opted out. Was that a strategic move, uh, being a pioneer of the coalition? I think yeah, the PDIs have issued uh, a number of grounds of why they are reacting to that particular development. Yeah. Uh, but maybe he's probably going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as my opinion is concerned, uh, that was uh, a strategic move uh, solely to help the, the president. That's what it is. Because there is nothing that would be far more authentic and honorable than the preceding text to the coalition itself. So I think this particular effort is just designed to help a particular individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, we should, whenever we are doing things or saying things, we must try to put them in the right perspective. What do you hope to gain? Why are you doing what you are doing? Is it in the interest of the people again, you go back to the people. Or is it designed to help someone somewhere to bounce back? Is that the case? So, and uh, what would the people gain from it? So for us, there was this procedural lapse from the onset. And throughout the two years, there was no coalition meeting when they were all in government. And not only that, we went to the National Assembly. As I told you, we should have, if we, had, if we were genuinely interested mm -hmm. in supporting what we all stood for, what the Gambian sweated for, we would have contested on an independent coalition ticket so that we'll rectify all the ills and make sure we put the country on a safe footing. And then Baro would have been accountable to all the parties because we'll be speaking with a collective voice. And not only would he have been accountable to all the parties, he would have also had the opportunity to, to be that respectable person in the eyes of the world. He would have been a sample. But for others, either it's out of ignorance or gross insincerity. Decided to go the other way. Because I would use ignorance here, knowing fully well that they are not ignorant people. Hmm. So if they are not ignorant of what they were doing, the missteps they were taking, then there must have been gross insincerity. Gross insincerity to do what? to give oneself a vantage point. But he was lucky. He was very lucky during the National Assembly elections. How? If the UDP had won 36 seats, the impeachment they were talking about, they would have done it. Mm. Nothing would have come out of it. And he was encouraged to support them. Even though we all, as a coalition, came together, campaigned, financed, worked for him to ascend to the presidency, in return, he was blindfolded to support a single party. Hmm. And he gave them immense resources, which he announced himself. Yeah. They went out and campaigned as the Chief coalition, the uh, coalition party, but he, he stakeholders. Did he say that he gave money to all? Um, he coalition? said he gave some 150, he gave others 300. Oh, and uh, in his own words, 
He said that he is going to support 25 candidates of the UDP there and then. He did not mean those words. What he did after, I don't know. But I think he supported uh, three for GMC yeah, and yeah. other parties. He gave them minimal support. But the bulk of the support came, went to UDP. We went to the UDP. And by no means has any party even got one third of what UDP had. Because if you're talking of 25 candidates for the UDP, yeah. <laughs> divide the rest amongst Among the others the and see who, 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 what they had. So, Barrow definitely at that time was whining and dining with the UDP. UDP. Now they're now they Okay. <laughs> but, but then the interest mm -hmm. surfaces. Yeah. Whenever uh, challenges start to come, the interest unfolds. And what is the interest here? UDP has 31 seats. They are short of five seats to be able to impeach him. Barrow is president. He is secured as president because he fears no impeachment mm -hmm. coming directly from the yes, UDP. Yeah. UDP. Mm -hmm. The UDP decides to exert pressure. And you can hear some of their MPs saying we are going to impeach him. Only for them to realize that they do they not have, have the numbers. numbers to impeach him. That is why I said Barrow was lucky. Um, that's just a coincidence. But he would have really been impeached by now. So it brings us to the other point. Why are we in this? Why are we in this? Why are we doing all this? Is it for our individual interests or is it for the common good? <laughs> because as we have it in our national as anthem, we should work for our common good. Yeah. Not for the personal interests. And hearing what we are seeing all the way is someone trying to build himself, herself up. That has happened with all the former presidents, uh, coalition partners. So really, they would not want to go and sit down in such a meeting to do what? So in such, there is no more part of the coalition, in short. There yeah. is no coalition. There is no coalition. <laughs> there is no coalition. <laughs> there is no. Babaro does not really need anyone to endorse his presidency. No. And he made it very clear. He does clear. not really need anyone. And he made it clear that he sure. is going, 2021 is the next election. Sure. He, is not go, he is not going to uh, need the endorsement of anyone mm -hmm. to make him contest, or any party to make him contest for the presidency next time or not. It is within the constitution mm -hmm. for him to stand for elections mm -hmm. again. again. Right to be voted and voted. So what, what are you going to gain? Whom do you want to impress? You cannot impress him anymore. Oh. He's already there. He's already there. <laughs> so maybe to give to give more legitimacy to the president. No. So he can no. he can continue so, to, no, to twenty twenty one. There is no <laughs> legitimacy. I mean if the if the coalition agreed to say yes we, we said three years but now we are saying we think he cannot complete what he's doing, so he should go for five years. Fair, that is moral legitimacy. Uh, fair matter. Well, as far <laughs> as the no approach he has already taken, yeah. I, I don't think, like he said, uh, he does not need anyone's uh, legit uh, endorsement in this regard. Yeah. Because the very uh, instrument that he relied on to say that he would stay for five years, mm -hmm. the same instrument, as far as uh, the present constitution is concerned, mm -hmm. section 26, gives him the right to, to vote and be voted, voted for. for. Exactly. So he can run again for office. Yeah. But uh, what we must remind him is uh, to really understand how we got to this stage mm -hmm. as yeah. far as the political evolution of this country is concerned. Yeah. And he needs to have that humanly approach and humanly 
uh, faith and honesty and integrity to uh, our politics as far as uh, these whole issues are concerned. We've moved from a particular stage that led us uh, here. And he, like he said, uh, could be a great pioneer mm -hmm. in propagating best standards of democratic practices and culture in this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, is, this is the only given opportunity we have for that. Apart from that, we make, we'll get into multi-party contests. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what kind of parties will be winning again. But him as a transitional leader, mm -hmm. brought up by coalition of stakeholders, believing in certain democratic principles, he can make the change for the Gambia. He has that opportunity. Sophie, meola wu sel te ner. Bach na halal ak mak yep amna calcium, iron, protein ak vitamin yu bari. Sophie, full cream powder milk la amna 20 gram, 200 gram ak 400 gram. Kuko nyam do tuko bai. Sophie, proudly Gambian. Hello, Modu. Mod, money. Demal ma jaya legi nga fail masuma tiketu makabi. Dada demre. Dama demdi jaya lai demal. Mande kon fala demi. Hana hamu lo on forward demi. Hamu kundi. Jaya enyo hamom. Kon forward demi. Hana jaya yere. Jaya yere nga forward demi. Sabosla hiya hamom. So cha demi changa forward demi. Bo cha demu changa forward demi. Bo kon demu lo jokadem jini limore. Aja. Wendy, sini tu kuai nak? Tu kuai dah fakbah bade. Jin lo fikir kau dah? Kau mesti nak. Dengan an Allah aku kubar cakaran ba. Ngado hendak jin seni, dok hendak jin jin. Makan nak kenal wah tu ko? Nyusut juga ba. Dengan itu aku nilai sini lampi cakaran. Yang mesti aku kau nak? Kepo ko hamil dengan juli jirak fonga jar sunyi bor. Dem cakaran ba. Kualik ko kau? Eh, yo dengan lek badoyal, lek busur, yo dengan lek badesal, lek begini ni cibiti di mai. Kui fai nak? Kui fai je? Eko bank bulan jenah jangan jempa. Hundred thousand gay deposit. Cepat ko bank. Nyu jok lebih sih. Engkau dem tu sen makan dengan kami ni monik tu mungkin airport ba. Jok lebih kunjuk jok lebih sih lebih sih. Wah illa, engkau dem nak kira ba. Tu sen office ba. Fifty kira ba abon ni. Cepat bulan tu FID. Assalamualaikum. Wah, betul ko dem makan ni. Dah ada mak. Kandu mak bayi. Kena buang tak? Kena buang jinta. Jinta. Eh jinta. Jinta je ayat lagi. Je ayat. Nyonya jat jat al sin tu. Rekta bawa bawa bawa. Deflam. Gambar nasional. Travel. Anhaj agent. Siapa kau hamil minum tiket lari? Nyonya kau yer. Ajek. Nyau gek dan dia nyonya kau yer. Nyonya kau nyonya kau nyonya kau yer. Mana ni pun dia bici muri ajek nyonya kau yer. Mau apa yo? Sen office mana kami mohon nak cek sen buti airport mana? Sen office ni. Kami mungkin kata bahaya. Complain. So buat gaji biasa complain buat kita layu pula. Jaya enak. Nyo nasional karya yang kita minta. Jaya. Nyo kamu. Finally, we we are running out of time. But finally, um, what is the assessment of the Barak government from your point of view and you and you, and then we will wrap up from that. What is your assessment? We have got the uh, the TRRC. We have had the, uh, the, the, the Commission of Inquiry. The Constitutional Review Commission is on. Um, these are all key issues. Those that were part of the uh, recommendations uh, made by the coalition. coalition. And all of these are on, on, on process. I mean, these are things that, especially the Constitutional mm -hmm. Review Commission, very important. But generally, what is your assessment of the government? My general assessment of the government, uh, I think, what? I will do is to hold on, hold on, and <laughs> wait to see things unfold. All it's the almost three years. <laughs> well, uh, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I want to hold on and wait to see things unfold. Okay. Mm, there are certain things that I want to see happen. They're not happening. There are other things that I thought should happen and are happening. Just like you said. The CRC, the TRRC, well, those are happening. I understand the security sector reforms Forces, yeah. are also in full gear. So, but uh, the agricultural policy, the economic policy, the health policy, the education policy, uh, these are areas where one should really look at. You know, you should not look at development by way of uh, looking at 
uh, infrastructure only. Mm -hmm. You must look at the relevance yeah. of the infrastructure to the socio-economic well-being of the people. Mm -hmm. If the infrastructure goes to affect positively the lives of the vast majority of the Gambian people, then fine, that may not be reduced to cosmetic infrastructure. But whereas 80% of the Gambian people are not able to use such facilities, and there are perennial problems that are to be addressed and are not addressed, uh, still it's better to wait and then save your energy till at such a time. Till at such a time. And then, uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Suleiman, yeah. what's your assessment of the government? Considering well, it's a transitional government. Yes. Yes. Uh, assessing the borough government here would mean looking at the issues that were set out in the coalition, coalition manifesto. Right? Yeah. Uh, whether they have been established or not, or implemented or not. Like he said, there are some in process, yeah. some are yet to happen, and some may not even happen. But uh, yeah. at a uh, macro perspective, uh, the ordinary Gambian would be bothered about education, health, yeah. the economy, living conditions. Is Barrow that type of a leader who could make an impact to improve this particular area? This is what an ordinary Gambian in the street would be asking. Yeah. He may not be asking where the borough is uh, implementing coalition reform agendas. But the ordinary Gambian would like to, uh, perhaps maternal mortality would like to see that being addressed. Mm. Women are still uh, in labor carried on donkey carts. So those are the kind of compelling issues that the ordinary Gambian wants to see change. And if, they, if there should be an assessment uh, from that ordinary perspective, I would say nothing has changed in that regard. Nothing has changed. Yes. Kemi Singh, what's your assessment? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You know, we will see Baro here. If we want to assess, we might assess him based on what he agreed with the Gambian people. That is the coalition agreement, which is a three-year mandate, and his mandate is to make reforms of this country. Um, but if you look at even the strategy that Baro make, like uh, the Constitution Review, mm -hmm. the TRRC, uh, this was all drafted within the three years, and they said that we will have this within these three years. But when the bill was even tabled at the National Assembly, like the Constitution had revealed, it waited until after one year after the transition, and the bill came, and the bill was telling us that it will serve two years, eight months, before it will be ready to have a constitution. That automatically tells you that the president has an interest to go beyond three years. So, but if you look at the constitution itself, can we have a constitution without a constitutional review commission? Yes. And will it save us? Yes. It will save us all the money. We could have a constitution within six months. And this was the very constitution that we all said that this was a very bad constitution. It was not even good to be used as a governing tools in this country. But we see that our past, somebody who we elected, you know, to bring back the power back to the people so that we have a constitution that will speak the language of the people, it's comfortable to have called that a constitution up to a scenario where he will quote those sessions, you know, and say that these are still the laws of this country and if you violate it, and what the law says will be implemented. So for me, in the area of coalition, when I am going to assess Barrow, I will say he has failed woefully yeah. when it comes to the coalition agreement because so far nothing is uh, achieved that we can say this is what they binds them together and the three years is almost elapsed. But if he wants to continue, to the five years, we will wait. After the five years, we will judge, assess, be, uh, assess and see what has been achieved so far. Whether the Constitutional Review Commission or the, the Constitution that we have speak the language of the Gambian people, the TRRC, whether it has achieved its mandate, whereby it will heal those who have suffered and those who have offended. Yes, justice will be served, but they will know that this is not a witch hunt, but it's there in you know, order to serve, and they will know that definitely justice has been served. It's not an individual punishing me, but this is the law that is punishing me. me. We look at uh, the educational sector, whether it has moved from where we left. The health sector, whether Barrow at least have laid the foundation, because the whole idea was to lay the foundation. And whoever comes will take it from there and we go. Whether this has been achieved, then I will reserve, if he is ready to go for the five years, I will reserve my comment. But if it is for the coalition agenda, Barrow has failed woefully. Wow. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you for your time. This has been a very interesting conversation. I want to thank you for coming to our studios. Thank you very much, and good night to you all. Thank See you, you next week. Thank you.